Madam Public Advocate. May we have quiet in the chambers. May members please take their seats. Quiet in the chambers, please. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Everyone, please find a seat. Thank you. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Cornegy. Over here. <laughs> Thank you. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Here. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Gradenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Miller. Present. Moya. Here. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Espinal. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Here. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Reverend Brian C. Ellis Gibbs, the pastor of Queens Baptist Church, located at 93-23, 217th Street in the Great Borough of Queens. Quiet in the chambers. Let us pray. God, you who are called by many names and from whom we have received second chances, you who loves us more than we know, on this day, at this particular time, in the continuing of time, in this moment in the life story of our city, we come before you in this historical space first saying thank you. Thank you for life and breath. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for love and light. God, we request your presence to enter into this space and fill this place with your holiness. For in this room are those whom you have called into position and have gathered as a collective force to bless your people. We pray that as you have invited them to participate in your work, that you pour into them wisdom and understanding. We pray, O oh Holy One, that as they discern, dialogue, discuss, and decide upon legislation and policies that you would reveal your will to them for you have called them to be light in darkness. You have called them to be conduits for compassion and ambassadors of justice for all who are residents of our city. 
Show up, O oh God, that as they deliberate, they acknowledge your presence in the faces of children, seniors, homeless persons, immigrants, all those who cry out to you. Use these women and men to work in a spirit of partnership, to bless and to empower, to protect and to strengthen, so that all have access to abundant life and protect them with your covering of love, bless them in their homes. For we pray, O oh God, that all things are done for your holy purpose, and we declare that evil and injustice have no place in this space. May your love be the rule of law that they follow, so that building your kingdom becomes priority above all. And it is with gratitude and humility in your holy and precious name, the name that is above every name, exalted in all the universe, that we pray. Let all say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And now a motion to spread the invocation. Council Member Barry Grudenchik. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. And uh, it's certainly a great honor for me and uh, for all the members of the New York City Council to have uh, Reverend Ellis Gibbs with us today. You know, one of the great things about running for public office um, is that we get to meet a lot of new people. And one of the best people that I've met um, in my two plus years in the New York City Council is Reverend Ellis Gibbs. Uh, he's on 217th Street in Queens Village. I like to affectionately refer to it as Church Street because we have a lot of churches on that very wide street, not too far uh, from my dear brother, uh, Danique Miller's district. And he is known uh, not only to myself, but Councilman Miller and Councilman Richards, and of course, Councilwoman Adams as well. Uh, I could read you his resume, but uh, you just heard his beautiful prayer. He's all about bringing people together, and we had a beautiful service a few months back where Congregation B'nai Jeshurun, which is a very famous Jewish congregation on the Upper West Side of the Great Borough of Manhattan in Councilwoman Rosenthal's district, and it was one of the most moving, uh, moving events that I have been to in a house of worship, and he even lets me preach when I go there, so uh, if you want a real treat, you can come and hear me uh, come and uh, bring the word. But today, it's my pleasure to welcome him on behalf of my uh, 50 brother and sister council members and the great public advocate of the city of New York, and I move right now to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you, Rabbi Gr Reverend Grudenchik. Thank you so much. <laughs> Adoption of minutes, Councilmember Rivera. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of December 19th, 2017 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M12, zoning amendment. May we have a roll call vote on that? Adams. Aye. Amphrey Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegy. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. C. Si. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Lander. Lander. Levin. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Lanceman. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye, and with permission, I vote aye on all items coupled on the general order calendar. Yes. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. 
Ulrich. Matteo. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Aye. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 47 and in the affirmative, zero in the negative. All quiet in the chambers as, as we now hear from the speaker, Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Public Advocate James. Good afternoon, everyone. We begin today on a tragic note, an Amtrak train carrying some of our Republican colleagues in Congress crashed into a truck this morning, and as of now, there has been one fatality. And though we may disagree on a lot with folks from the other side of the aisle, we are all friends and colleagues who are working to improve the lives of everyday Americans. Everyone in Washington is in our hearts, and I hope and pray for the safety of everyone involved in this tragic accident this morning, which took place in West Virginia. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the passing of retired firefighter Ray Phillips, affectionately known as Gonzo. First responder we lost over the weekend to a 9-11 related illness. Ray brought joy to everyone around him, playing the official Santa Claus at the FDNY Widows and Children's Holiday Party and sharing stories of his favorite team, the New York Rangers. We will all remember Ray for his heroism and my thoughts and prayers are with his family during this very difficult time. I also want to recognize the loss of a civil rights trailblazer, a key player in establishing racial justice, the Reverend Dr. Wyatt T. Walker. Dr. Walker served as Chief of Staff to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and served as the first board chairman of the National Action Network, whose founder, my friend, Reverend Al Sharpton, announced his passing. We all had just celebrated the life and legacy of Dr. King and thus the work of Dr. Walker and the importance of his participation and leadership in the civil rights movement. And as we approach Black History Month, we especially recognize the impact African Americans have had on our nation's history, especially Dr. Walker and of course, Dr. King. My thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of Dr. Walker and let us please take a moment of silence in honor of the victims of this morning's train crash, Firefighter Phillips and Dr. Walker, if everyone could please rise. Please rise. Thank you all very much. Uh, before we begin on uh, today's agenda, I want to recognize, where is she? I hope she's up here. Oh, there she is. I want to recognize Anna Garcia, a member of the central staff whose last day is today. Anna has been part of our council family, starting out as a sergeant at arms before joining the scheduling team for uh, Melissa Mark Viverito, our previous speaker, and then for me. Uh, we thank Anna for her service, and we wish her the best of luck in following her passion, which is what she's doing now. Anna, if you would please stand so we can recognize you and give you a round of applause. Thank you very much. Don't be a stranger. Come back and visit. Uh, I want to jump into uh, our docket today. Uh, we are only oh, yeah. voting Let's on see. two finance items and a few land use items this afternoon. Beginning with the finance items, we'll be voting on two Article 11 property tax exemptions. The first exemption for a property located at 211 West 28th Street is in my district. It's going to create 37 units of supportive housing, which I am really happy about. 37 units of supportive housing. Uh, and I think it's going to be for people living with HIV and AIDS and formerly homeless individuals. We need more housing like this in New York City. The second exemption is for the Two Bridges property in Councilmember Margaret Chin's district, which would preserve 198 units of affordable rental housing. 
Moving on, the Council is going to be voting on three land use projects this afternoon. First, we'll vote on a rezoning in Williamsburg to allow commercial retail on a block front along Bedford Avenue in Councilmember Steve Levin's district. Next, we're going to vote on a small rezoning in Prospect Heights to allow housing in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district. And finally, we will vote on a disposition of a city property and a tax exemption for affordable housing uh, in Hamilton Heights. Uh, that complete in, in Councilmember Mark Levine's district, I believe. Right, Mark? Yes. That completes the highlights of today's uh, agenda. Sit down, please. And that wasn't even Gridenchik talking. Uh, that completes the highlights of today's docket, and I look forward to proceeding with today's vote. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Discussion of general orders. Oh, Whoops. Jesus. Hold on one second. W was Ravi here? So, so I, I want to, we had a press conference uh, just about an hour ago in the Step City Hall, and uh, Ravi Ragbir is with us today after enduring a, uh, a very brutal, difficult, um, unjust, in my opinion, uh, proceeding and detention and attempted deportation a few weeks ago. He's here with his uh, wife, and uh, I know a lot of members talked earlier about what their feelings were, but I thought it was important to have him on the floor here today, and I want to recognize him. So, Ravi, thank you for being here. I turn it back over to the public advocate. Thank you. Discussion of general orders? Seeing none. Report of special committees? None. Reports of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Finance. Preconsidered LU 12 and Reso 129 and LU 13 and Reso 130 tax exemptions. Uh, coupled on general orders? Report of the Committee on Land Use. LU 1 and Reso 131 Sidewalk Cafe. A couple to be filed pursuant uh, to a letter of withdrawal. LU2 and Reso 132 and LU3 and Reso 133, Sidewalk Cafe and Zoning Amendment. A uh, couple on general orders. LUs 4 and 5, Bergen Street Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.7B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Excuse me. LU 11 and Reso 134, tax exemption. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 4 and Reso 135 and LU 5 and Reso 136, Bergen Street rezoning. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Uh, coupled on general orders, and I would ask for a roll call vote on all items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of LU4, which, as we know, is a result of the whole MIH uh, legislation that we passed several years ago. I think that until we have a much more significant number of apartments dedicated to people who are at the 80, even the 100 and below, we're going to continue to have areas of gentrification where poor people, low-income people, will not be able to afford to live in this city. So with that, I vote aye on all, with the exception of LU4. Thank you. Borelli. Aye on all. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all. Deutsch. Uh, permission to explain my intros today? Yes. Uh, your introduction? Oh, yeah, I guess yeah. not. Yes. We don't have time for that. Uh, <laughs> you, could, you could come back. And, <laughs> I and all. I'll put you on the uh, general discussion calendar. Thank you. Diaz. Don't, don't do that. Don't put him on the general discussion calendar. <laughs> Diaz. Yes. Drum. Aye. Espinel. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Aye and all. Jonai. Aye on all. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. 
Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. I know. Ku. I don't know. Kozlowitz. Aye, I don't know. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. I don't know. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Mizell. Yes. Men. <laughs> Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Affirmative. Moya. I on all. Perkins. I on all except the uh, LU4. I vote no in it. Powers. I on all. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. I on all. Rivera. I on all. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Rose. I and all. Salamanca. I and all. <laughs> Traeger. I. Ulrich. Pass. Valone. I and all. Van Bramer. I and all. Williams. Jaeger. Aye. Ulrich. Yes. Matteo. Yes. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of Land Use 4 and Resolution 135, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And there was a revised, revised land use call-ups, 15 in the affirmative, zero negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. There are no resolutions. <clears throat> we will begin with general discussions. We only have one individual who seeks to talk uh, to uh, Councilmember Kalos. I have uh, good news and bad news. The good news is that last term we passed the right to counsel. The bad news is that with more people in housing court, more people will find themselves on a list of tenants who face discrimination uh, in renting new apartments. Two bills hope to curb this problem. The first would require tenant screening companies who make the so-called quote tenant blacklist unquote to provide fair and complete information including when tenants were in the right, landlords would no longer be allowed to discriminate against tenants who won or paid their rent. Please sign on to introductions 85 and 86, along with our public advocate, Tish James, and uh, Gail Brewer, our Manhattan Borough President, to our co-prime sponsors. No one should face homelessness simply because they've been to housing court. You may also know that scaffolding is my pet peeve. Scaffolding goes up but doesn't go down for months years, even decades, while no work is happening. Please sign on to, uh, sorry, some scaffolding is almost old enough to vote. Please sign on to introduction 87, requiring work to continue without interruption for more than a week and to be completed within six months or the city steps in to do the work and make bad landlords pay. Lastly, I am 43 hours, 27 minutes, and about 10 seconds away from being a father. Uh, Woo! Uh, my wife and I are more than a little nervous. Uh, helping to settle our nerves is knowing that we will be there for each other. I mean this literally. Uh, as we are both lucky enough to have the option of paid parental leave, uh, an option extended to far too few Americans. I was proud to support Governor Cuomo for the paid family leave, which started in this new year. Uh, to provide private sector employees with eight weeks of pay at, sorry, eight weeks at 50% pay. While Mayor de Blasio's announced paid parental leave for city employees, uh, I, I was disappointed to learn that it leaves out our police officers, our teachers, our principals, transit workers, and civil servants. Uh, and I firmly believe we must provide all of our public employees with the same benefits we are now demanding of the private sector. 
I'll just skip to the end, which is just to say, I hope that we have paid family leave for all New Yorkers and uh, that our society begins to expect from its fathers that uh, they'll take full paid paternity leave. And I can only lead by example, joining my colleague Antonio Reynoso, uh, who's currently on paternity leave and taking paternity leave myself and starting in a matter of hours. Thank you to my colleagues for the well wishes and I'll see you again in March. Congratulations, Ben, congratulations. Congratulations, Daddy. Council Member Chin. Uh, good afternoon. I want to draw my colleagues' attention to Intro 30, legislation that will hold unscrupulous landlords accountable when they vacate a building due to neglect and disrepair. Just last week, a judge ordered the Department of Buildings to inspect 85 Bowery in my district after an elongated legal battle between the tenants and the landlord. When the inspector went in there, the main staircase was in such disrepair that he had no choice but to vacate the building, putting nearly 100 individuals from infants to the elderly into shelters. Even though Joseph Bitesh and other landlords like him is required to pay the fines and cure the problem, he has few reason to do so quickly. Furthermore, every day those tenants are without a home the city foots the bill to provide the shelter. Intro 30 will require that the landlord pay his share by requiring the landlord to create an escrow account with HPD and pay at least 10% of the rent roll into the account for the duration of the vacate. We need to continue holding bad landlords like Patesh accountable for their action on, or in this case, inaction. We can no longer allow them to display their tenant on the taxpayer's dime. I urge my colleague to sign on to Intro 30, and I thank uh, Council Member Cornegie, the Chair of our Housing and Buildings, uh, for a co-sponsor. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just wanted to add my remarks on the passing of the great Dr. Wyatt T. Walker. He was a great person, um, and I just wanted to add my comments. Dr. Y.T. Walker was an ordained minister. He was a pastor of Canaan Baptist Church of Christ in Harlem. He was an advocate for human rights, and he was very much involved in, di in the boycotts and fighting for affordable housing and improved education. He was the executive director of the Southern Christian Leadership Confer Conference. He was a confidant and right-hand man of the Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He was a brilliant strategist. He was an excellent preacher. If you ever heard him, you would always recall that. And finally, one of his comments that he offered in terms of celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday was, it is insufficient for us to come together on his birthday sometimes in an artificial way, white and black together and saying, quote, we shall overcome and hold hands and get a warm feeling and then go back to business as usual in a white racist America. Thank you. Council Member Traeger. Thank you, Public Advocate. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate my colleague, Antonio Reynoso, Brooklyn Delegation's new co-chair. Uh, I'm honored to be able to continue to serve as co-chair with him. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues as well uh, for their support. I'd like to also uh, mention some, some bills that we're introducing uh, today. I'm very excited to reintroduce my bill that would provide uh, free diapers at child care centers and domestic violence shelters. It's more expensive than ever to raise a family in our city and diapers are a costly necessity. Uh, having clean diapers for your children is not a luxury but it is a need. I'd like to, uh, first of all, I'm very proud to have many uh, colleagues on board as prime co-sponsors. Many of them know, know firsthand the high cost of diapers. Uh, thanks to Council Members Amprey Samuel, Rosenthal, Majority Leader Cumbo, Council Members Levin and Reynoso. Also turn your attention to uh, uh, intros 377, uh, where we will give New Yorkers a right to know about the sale of public sidewalks and streets before they turn over to private interest. I was shocked to learn that there is sales uh, of public streets and sidewalks to private interests without the public knowing. We have a right to know before a sale is made and why the sale is being made. Also, intro 378, uh, when we resurface our streets, it should be curb to curb. For some reason, the city of New York does not fix repair curbs, which is a major safety hazard and risk, particularly for our seniors. Uh, and intro 379, 
which would require communication between Department of Transportation and utility companies, we have all worked hard to get streets resurfaced, only to see them ripped up by a utility company a day or a week afterwards. And we learn that there is no communication or lack thereof between these entities. This bill would require greater communication uh, between these partners so we have the clean and safe streets that we deserve and there's better communication. With that, thank you for your time. Thank you. Council Member Koo. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam Public Advocate and also Speaker. Uh, I want to say uh, this is indeed a progressive uh, City Council. After eight years in the City Council, I progress from second row to first row. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> Give him an extra minute. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Constantinides. I, I can't be as brief as Peter. I, I don't have anything that funny to say. I apologize. Now, I, I don't know what to say, Peter. But uh, I, I want to call my colleagues' attention to two bills that I'm reintroducing today that will help expand, uh, expand wind energy in New York City. We have a great solar map, thanks to, the Q, to Q, our friends at CUNY and others. But we don't have a good wind energy map. And this would direct the city to create a, 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 a map so we can map where good e wind potential is so homeowners can look and see if wind energy is an opportunity for them to look for renewable sources. Our second bill, Intro 50, would create uh, basic standards for installation of wind turbines. Right now, if you want a wind turbine on your home, you have to go through the Department of Buildings to get a special permit, uh, which is uh, reinventing the wheel every single time. It shouldn't be that way. So this bill will create basic standards of, of color, of noise, how to install it, uh, how to uninstall it, how to make sure that during a hurricane it is secured uh, and not being able to blown away. By setting these basic parameters, we're giving people a path to walk to renewable energy to make sure they can get away from fossil fuels and help us green our city and make it more sustainable. So I hope my colleagues will sign on to both Intro 48 and intro 50 today. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cumbo. Thank you, public advocate. Just want to acknowledge that history continues to be made. We recently uh, celebrated, but most importantly, led a resistance march in New York City, the Women's March, brought together over 200,000 women. In Los Angeles, 600,000 women. In Chicago, estimates of 300,000. And marches also took place in Philadelphia, where an estimated 50,000 women and men came out. In San Jose, 20,000. In San Francisco, 50 to 60,000. And all throughout London, Rome, and other European cities. The women's movement and march has become stronger, more vibrant, with greater participation, and this resistance is going to continue to bring national attention to the challenges that we are facing as a nation, and we are moving together as one all across the world. I also want to bring attention to our World Hijab Day. As the leader of the free world, number 45, has supposed to exemplify American ideals and ways of life. Instead, he has utilized his global platform to perpetuate hate, and a lack of tolerance and respect for others. On World Hijab Day, which is observed annually on February 1st in 140 countries, we will stand in solidarity with w Muslim women and men, excuse me, of Muslim women of all ages to celebrate their faith, identity, community, modest lifestyle, beauty, and invaluable contributions to the culture of our community. I will be wearing a hijab tomorrow, and I hope that women on February 1st will also do the same. In my district, we've had a, a an incredible loss to our community. Um, Dr. Sam Penn, many of you may know him. He is the founder of the Fort Greene Council that has provided incredible services for our seniors as well as our children. Many of you may know him. He has been here to advocate. He even had a, a partial stroke on the way here to advocate for his senior center and daycare center at 966-972 Fulton Street. So we honor him and we honor his legacy and all that he has contributed to our community. Thank you, Majority Leader. Madam Public Advocate, before we go to the last speaker, I was remiss. <clears throat> I didn't know until <clears throat> it was just flagged for me. We also have another very valuable 
a staff member here at the council whose last day it is today, someone who's been with us for 15 years since 2002 uh, from the great borough of Brooklyn, a policy analyst on the Youth Services Committee, and he served a variety of committees in the legislative division. I want to give a big round of applause and thank Michael Benjamin for his service uh, at the council. He's standing at the back of the room. Thank you, Michael. Council Member Steve Levine. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, my colleagues, I have a bunch of bills that I'm reintroducing. If you could take a look at them, I'd appreciate it. Um, and uh, I just want to also congratulate my friend Ben Kalos on becoming a father later this week. Congratulations, Ben. Sleep now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. And lastly, oh, Council Member Eugene. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. I'm going to be very brief. I just want to take the opportunity also to thank Michael Benjamin. You have done a remarkable job. I was the chair of the Youth Services Committee. Because of your advice, your guidance, and your dedication, we were able to make a lot of progress and serve the young people in New York. We all know that the young people in New York, they deserve the best that we can provide as a city. And we were able to do a lot of work. We were able to really improve the quality of life of the young people, offer them a lot of opportunities and resources for them to grow up and become positive citizens. All that were, were due because of the contribution of Michael. Michael, on behalf of all the members of the Youth Services Committee, on behalf of those young people, on behalf of their parents, and also on behalf of the great city of New York and the city council, thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you. Seeing none other, and now to close our speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, today's state of meeting is adjourned. Good night and good luck.